the Wansian tiger. An extinct subspecies of the modern tiger once roamed the forests and grasslands of Eastern Asia. This particular subspecies is the earliest known subspecies of Panthera tigris known to have emerged in the fossil record. This subspecies was first described in the year 1928, from fossil remains discovered in southern China's Wanzhou district. It was originally assigned the classification of Felis acutidens. The fossils, however, were re-examined in 1947 by Dutch and American paleontologists and determined to be an extinct subspecies of the modern tiger. The species became reclassified as Panthera tigris acutidens, better known as the Wansian tiger. It existed during the early to mid-Pleistocene epoch. This was a time period that began about two and a half million years ago and lasted until around 11,700 years ago. It was an era marked by repeated glaciations, the so-called Ice Ages, and was witness to the evolution and expansion of our own species, Homo sapiens. The Pleistocene epoch was also the dawn of the first tiger subspecies. This magnificent creature roamed the vast landscapes of what is now China, spreading fear and awe in equal measures amongst the other inhabitants of this prehistoric world. Its geographical distribution was vast, covering regions from the northern cold terrains to the southern warmer plains. In this video, we will be delving into the evolutionary history environment, as well as its prehistoric prey and competition. The Wansian tiger was one of the largest subspecies of tigers to have ever lived, weighing in at around 200 to 350 kilograms. It was on average larger than any living tiger subspecies growing to sizes comparable to some record-breaking Bengal and Siberian tigers. The tiger's exact evolutionary history still remains uncertain. The tiger's closest living relative, the snow leopard, diverged from the tiger approximately 2.7 to 3.7 million years ago. The Long Dan tiger, also known as Panthera Zidansky, has been proposed to be a potential ancestor of the modern tiger. It existed several thousand years before the emergence of Panthera tigris acutidens although they may have overlapped in their existence. It is known from only a handful of fossil material. No complete skeletons of this subspecies has been found, although skull, arm, and leg bone material has been analyzed. Due to its more northern range, the Wansian tiger may have possessed a long fur coat similar to the modern Siberian tiger or the now extinct Caspian tiger. It is however possible that due to the long existence of the Wansian tiger, Earlier tigers of this subspecies may have had thinner fur coats. As the Ice Age progressed and the climate got cooler, later Wansian tigers might have gradually evolved longer and longer fur to adapt to the colder temperatures, however without any preserved remains. It would be impossible to determine with certainty whether or not this was the case. China's geography during the Pleistocene was shaped by dramatic shifts in climate, resulting from glacial and interglacial cycles. These cycles profoundly influenced the land, vegetation, and wildlife. During glacial periods, northern China was cold and dry, dominated by tundra and steppe grasslands. Temperatures plummeted and permafrost covered large areas. In contrast, southern China remained relatively temperate, with subtropical conditions even during these colder phases. During interglacial periods, warmer and wetter climates allowed forests and grasslands to expand creating a more hospitable environment for diverse life. The Wansian tiger wasn't alone in its old world. This animal shared its habitat with a variety of even larger creatures, as well as formidable adversaries that would have competed for resources with this extinct predator. In the open grasslands, giant flightless birds like Pachystruthio and Struthio andersoni, relatives of modern ostriches, shared the landscape, these massive birds could reach impressive heights and were built for speed, helping them evade predators like the Wansian tiger. Pachystruthio, in particular, was one of the largest ostrich-like birds of its time, weighing in at over 300 kilograms. Nearby, the peculiar Nestorotherium wandered through woodlands and savannas. These strange herbivores, related to horses and rhinos, used their clawed forelimbs to grasp and pull down foliage. Despite their intimidating appearance, they were peaceful browsers, but their size made them a challenge for even the Wansian tiger to hunt. In the lush forest, Gigantopithecus, the largest ape to ever exist, roamed the forests of southern China. Standing at over two and a half meters tall, this gentle giant likely fed on fruit, bamboo, and other vegetation. 
While they pose no threat to the tiger, their size and strength would have made them difficult prey. Towering over the landscape, Paleoloxodon huayhuensis, a species of giant elephant, was the largest creature in its environment. Weighing in at over 13 tons, adults of this species would have been untouchable. Calves or weakened individuals, on the other hand, might have fallen prey to predators like the tiger. Another gigantic herbivore of this era was Stephanorhinus, a prehistoric rhinoceros. These powerful animals were armored with thick skin and armed with large horns, making them formidable opponents for any predator. They thrived in grasslands and woodlands, often sharing the tiger's range. The impressive Sinomegacheros, also known as the giant Chinese elk, lived in herds across the open plains and forests, known for their enormous antlers, which could span several meters. This animal's antlers formed an unusual shape in the center, somewhat similar to a frill on a ceratopsian dinosaur. And of course, there were prehistoric water buffalo and wild boar, too. This particular prehistoric Chinese species, Bubalus tilehardi, possessed short but very thick horns. Numerous apex predators such as Homotherium the scimitar-toothed cat, Pachycrocuta the giant short-faced hyena, as well as Asinonyx pleistokinicus and gigantic extinct cheetah species weighing as much as an African lion would have occasionally encountered the enormous prehistoric tiger. Like modern tigers, Panthera tigris acutidens would have resided primarily in more forested areas of Eastern Asia, so interactions with some of these other predators would have been somewhat limited. Homotherium, Pachycrocuta, and the giant cheetah would have resided primarily in grassland ecosystems. The Wansian tiger was certainly a powerful creature, and was certainly capable of taking on these other extinct predators, provided it was not too outnumbered. The Wansian tiger went extinct perhaps around 500,000 years ago, thousands of years before the arrival of the first Homo sapiens. So humans would not to blame for this creature's demise, instead, it was another reason. As the Ice Age gripped the planet, dense forests, the perfect hunting grounds for tigers, gave way to open steppes. These expansive grasslands, devoid of cover, would have been unfavorable for the striped predator. This may have forced the Wansian tiger to migrate further south, where there was more forested ecosystems. If this hypothesis was true, the Wansian tiger may have needed to compete for resources with other tiger subspecies, such as the Trinil tiger. This competition and environmental change may ultimately have led to its demise. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the Wansian tiger. As per usual, please feel to like, share, and subscribe. This is King Theropod, signing out.